Pussy listen to the play by play day by day. What it do, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I'm your host, Day with an I, not a why, do not ask why, and today I have a great one for y'all because we are joined by investor, trader, overall entrepreneur, the one and only my guy, JT, what it do. It was good, man. Good to be here. Appreciate you for having me on. Absolutely. I appreciate you for reaching out to make this happen. I know that we are going to provide great conversation for the people to hear that they need to hear. Thanks. Um, so before we jump straight into things, I want to start with this. We discovered um, some great news before the show kicked off. You're a Philadelphia Eagles fan yep, as well. Yep. You see that? Y'all see the helmets? Yep. Yeah, Old school yeah, and yeah, new yeah. school. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, the Kelly Greens this year. <laughs> Ooh, that's why I got it. Yep. Um, so let me ask you this first and foremost. Who's your favorite Eagle player on the team right now, offense or defense? I got to go with Hurts. Yeah. I got to go with Hurts. He's that guy. Yeah. He is really that guy. Yeah, I think Hurts is a no-brainer. Behind him, I'm going with Smitty, man. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah, yeah, Smith, yeah, 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 yeah. I love that combo, man. Yeah, yeah, the Slim Reaper. Since year one, yep. AJ, AJ just provided, like, the perfect, you know, cherry on top for that. Thanks. All right, so let's get into the nitty-gritty of things. Um, I started off by saying, you know, you're an investor, uh, trader. So first and foremost, what's the difference between investing and trading? Yeah, so trading is like active money. It's income. It's active. You have to be in the markets. You're looking at the markets every day. You're constantly getting in and out of trades. You're looking at charts. You're looking at news. It's kind of like a job in mm -hmm. a way. It's a form of income. And then investing is passive income where you kind of just put your money into a stock. Like say you put your money in Apple stock, you put $1,000 in there, you just let it sit for a year, five years, 10 years, mm -hmm. whatever. And you don't really do anything. You don't have to constantly be worrying about what it's doing because investing is more long term. So trading is short term and active and investing is long term and passive. Okay. And straight to the nitty gritty. I like that. Um, and you can do, can't you like do day trade with the stock market as well? Yeah. Is that, is that essentially what you're talking? Is the trading in the stock market or is that somewhere else? Yeah, I trade in the stock market. There's okay. different things you can trade like crypto, Forex, but I do um, stock and stock option trading. Okay. Nice. Nice. Um, and you have both long term and short term, yep. which is important. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, you mentioned Forex. I want to ask you, were you ever involved in Forex? And the second question is, what's the difference between Forex and the trading in the market now, how you do? So me personally, I've never traded Forex. Mm -hmm. I could, but it's just not something that really interests me. Mm -hmm. I like trading stocks because stocks are attached to actual companies. So you can trade Apple stock. You know what Apple is because you got an iPhone. You can trade right. Nike stock. You know what Nike stock is. You wear the shoes. Mm -hmm. So I like being able to trade companies that I use that I can look at that I know exactly what they are. Forex is foreign exchange. So you're trading currency. So that's like the US dollar, um, the yen, uh, the euro, things like that. Yeah. Okay. And then I want to know, like, what happened to Forex? You know what I mean? They're kind of like, where's Waldo right now? You know what I mean? Like, they kind of just, so, just vanished. So Forex, Forex trading itself, actual trading the currencies, mm -hmm. it's a good stream of income. It's a good way to make money. Okay. People think Forex is a scam, and Forex itself is not a scam. The problem is a lot of people that came into Forex turned it into, well, they built companies around Forex that were scams. Um, pyramid schemes, the IML mm -hmm. thing, where you kind of recruit people to come in and yeah. they pretended like they were making money off of trading, but they were really making money off of getting signups and all that. So Forex itself isn't a scam, um, but the whole multi-level marketing thing that was built around Forex, it was a scam, that's kind of fell apart now. Mm, okay, got you. That makes sense. Because it. I do remember like when people would be like, yo, if you join mm -hmm. and you get this many people to join, then you'll get this amount of money. Instead of, yo, if you join, we'll break it down to you, you know, from the bottom, but then you can, you know, kind of build up. It's kind of like, yo, join, but bring other people along so that way we can really get paid. Yeah, and they they pretending like they were teaching people, like, oh, join and we'll teach you, but really it was join and get other people to sign up, and that's how you make your money. Okay, that makes sense, that makes sense. So, like, is it, I mean, I know we're in a, you know, the economy isn't in its best shape right. at the moment. So does that contribute to like Forex kind of, they're not as as out there as they were. Like, I don't know, is Forex doing good right now or like are they kind of taking a hit like most other things in the market? Well, the thing about trading is it doesn't matter what state the economy's in because as a trader, you can make money if the market's moving up or if it's moving down. 
Um, specifically like during COVID when things first happened in March 2020, the market was dropping a lot. Mm -hmm. Investors lost money because investing, you just buy it, you hold it, you need it to go up. But if yeah. you're trading, you can make money when it goes down. So we were making a bunch of money while the market was dropping March 2020 and the same with Forex. So as a trader and you're active in the market, it's up, down, it doesn't matter. You can still make money either way. Okay. So you said the company, do you have a company for this? Like, is this a business? that you like is it other people involved with with the trading or are you by yourself yeah so i have two companies built around trading the first one is a community um so i have people come in and i really do teach <laughs> not like they're oh we're talking about iml where you yeah, need to sign yeah. up but nah. so i teach people how to trade so we have um classes multiple times per week on zoom i get on voice every day and i do live trading which is where um, on the call and I'm telling people on the call what I'm buying, why I'm buying it, when I'm buying it, so they get to see what it's like to be a full-time trader. And I got other full-time traders we talk so they can hear how the conversation goes, just how see how our mind works. And then they have opportunities to get in stuff with us. And we've got learning resources. We've got a beginner's guide step by step. So even if you don't know anything about the stock market, step one is literally what is the stock market. And then from there, you get deeper and deeper into it. So that's the first company I got around trading. And then my second one is a software. It's a trading software. So that tracks trades in the stock market from your hedge funds, institutions, multimillionaires, the wealthiest people out there that are trading with seven, eight figures. And it shows you what they're buying in real time. And so that's useful because, say, if you see somebody spend $5 million on a trade, mm -hmm. that's that's serious money. Right. You're not going to guess or play around with that money. So right. you can see somebody spend $5 million and then maybe someone spends another $1 million on the same trade right after that, then 250000 another half a million. Mm -hmm. So you see millions of dollars going into these trades. You can look at that and say, okay, well, obviously these people are not playing around. They right. know something that I don't know. Right. So you can follow that. Even if you don't have that amount of money, you can follow with $100 thousand dollars whatever you got and it's right on the spot when these you know uh whales as in the call like yeah whales, yeah whales. when these whales invest in city stocks you can see it right on the spot when they get into yeah, it yeah that's the biggest thing is real time because in the stock yeah. market like yeah because a Huge. lot there's, there's a lot of sites that kind of show things delayed right maybe like the next day or whatever yeah. but that's not going to help you in the stock market because it's yeah stocks yeah. are already moving so yeah. you need it in real time so we give that to you in real time yeah i got caught with that i'm not going to lie um but it was also my fault because it was also parts of my uh ignorance towards it i got caught in the whole dogecoin remember yeah yeah remember yeah, the yeah, dogecoin yeah, wave? Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so like by the time i and then by the time i got caught onto it it was on it was popping like hey bet and everyone's like okay dogecoin to the moon elon came on saturday night live and shit and I mean, I didn't lose a lot. Luckily, I got out of it in time. But right. a lot of people lost a lot of money with that joint. And even like the GameStop thing, like you yep. said, that's why I asked if it was on the spot when you would see these whales buy. Because in the stock market, um, it's, I can't remember it verbatim, but it was something like once you find out about a hot stock, like, you know, after investors already invested into it, when you find out that it's hot, it's too late by then. Yeah, exactly. And that's... um. That's why my software is, is real time. And there was just an example of that earlier because um, it was uh, Johnson & Johnson, J&J, &J, the company. Mm -hmm. I saw it. We picked it up um, at the beginning of last month. There were billions of dollars going into puts, which means people are betting that the stock is going to move down. Mm -hmm. So billion, every single day, there's literally billions and billions and billions. So I got on it. I told my people about it. We made crazy money. It's on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. But then like a month after, we were already basically out. Yeah, we already made our money. Now news articles start posting, hey, there's a lot of money going into yep. these Johnson & Johnson. And I'm like, well, by that time, it's too late. The stock yeah. has already dropped a lot. Mm, nice, nice. Um, so with, with your companies, like with if someone's interested, like how can they, you know, get involved and be a part of it? Yeah, the best way is to go to my Instagram. It's at the Almighty JT, and then I got the link in my bio. It'll give you access to join either the Discord group or get access to the trading software. It's called Capital Flow. Nice, nice. Did you create the software on your own, like with coding and whatnot? Was that all you? It wasn't. Scratch? It wasn't all me. I got a team. I have nice. a team of coders um, around myself that uh, do a lot of the heavy lifting. Nice. A little helpful, helpful tip. It is great to know some coders. Yeah. Like, yeah. seriously. Like, IT is, you know, don't rely too much on just the black and white. You know what I mean? Get some coders to really put something together for you. I tell people, if you're not going to learn how to code yourself, you need to get some people around you to know how to do it. Really? 
Seriously, because I damn sure ain't gonna know how to cook myself. <laughs> I got too much other stuff to worry about. Right. You know what I mean? And that's you know, it's I mean, it's good to know, but you know, that takes time and dedication to really get to know it and understand it. Exactly. Not everyone, you know, it's just oh, I'm gonna wake up and be Mark Zuckerberg. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, nah, that takes a little bit of time. Um, so how did we even get here? Like, what sparked your interest to even you know get uh, interested and involved with investing and trading? So in 2016, I'm 23 years old. So in 2016, I was a junior in high school mm -hmm. and we had a required class. It was a personal finance class. It was for like half a semester. What, um, what, what, what state high school? In uh, Virginia. Okay. Damn. Cause a lot of high schools don't have yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I didn't realize how rare it was until after I graduated. Yeah. Um, and it was a public high school. They just had it as, as a requirement. That's what's so, up. Um, took a personal finance class and they weren't they kind of introduced things to us. They were like, this is stocks, this is real estate, this mm -hmm. is credit. They weren't teaching us how to do it, but they kind of just put it in our face, like this is what it is. Yeah. And I was always in interested in money because I'm just a hustler. Even mm -hmm. like before then I was flipping shoes and you know, just doing um, cutting grass, shoveling mm -hmm. snow, all type of stuff, just, just making money as a kid. Yeah. And so when I heard about the stock market, I was like, well, this is where millionaires and billionaires are making their money. So that took my interest and I kind of did some independent research from there. And then by the time I'm 18, I'm a senior in high school. I got a job. I was working at Domino's delivering pizza. So mm -hmm. I started, I was getting paychecks and I was getting tips. So I would put my money into the stock market and make some investments, make some trades. Didn't really know what I was doing, kind of trial and error. Mm -hmm. But then through YouTube, trial and error experience, I got to a point where I got consistent in about a year, year and a half. Um, started making some serious money, getting some good returns. And then... Um, Shortly after that was when I started my Discord community, and then it's just been up since then. And this was at 18 yeah. when you really started getting involved with yeah. the stock market and whatnot. Um, so we're, we're we're gonna we're gonna you know we're gonna talk about it when it comes to the stock market and whatnot. Most middle to low class Americans aren't involved with it, even though it's completely open for every. You were 18 years old working at Domino's and you got involved with it. Yep. Like you said, you went through trial and trial and error, but you picked up on it to the point where. You got a groove of things and then you got a community where y'all can, you know, share ideas and thoughts and strategies and whatnot. So why do you think it is that most middle to low class Americans, even though the stock market is right there for us to get involved with, we, you know, ignore it and say, nah, it's not really worth it. There's, there might be a few reasons. I think the biggest reason is a lot of people haven't seen someone else that they know do it. I think you can kind of get stuck in your ways because um, I mean, I'm from a small town, so the fact that I was even getting involved in the stock market was kind of unheard of from where I was at. But then once I started doing it and posting on social media, now I got more people from my city getting involved, getting in the group even. So I think a lot of times all it takes is to see someone that you know doing it successfully. So that's one of the reasons why I constantly share um, my wins on social media. And then two, um, to be honest, part of it could be arrogance. You know, they just, they they see it and they, they, might, they might see someone making money in the stock market. They're like, oh, you know, he thinks he's Warren Buffett or something. You know, mm -hmm. he can't teach me anything. Okay. And then you're just going to get stuck in your ways, stuck in that mindset. And then it's, it's, it's hard for people to just accept that, you know, this is real. This is something that you need to be doing for yourself. Right, right. Yeah. And then the, you know, the ignorance is bliss. So yeah. when people, you know, don't know about it, they don't want to. You yeah. know what I mean? But the knowledge of it is what gets people comfortable with it. Like um, my cousin Alex, shout out to Alex. Similar to you, when he was 18 years old in high school, he got involved with the stock market and nobody, nobody else in our immediate family, at least, was involved with it. So he's the first one. He's put me on and we're what, like four years apart, five years apart. And he's putting me and my cousins on my mom. Like he's telling us like about it and whatnot. I, we've heard of the stock market, but we just never ignorance is bliss. We just never got involved with it because yep. we had nothing. We had no idea about what it was and how it operated and whatnot. So he would like break it down to us, you know, in, in the simplest terms, but enough for us to be like, OK, that would spark, you know, that would intrigue us to get involved with it and whatnot. And that will make us even if it's just a couple of dollars trial and error, like you said, even yeah. I still didn't know the full, you know, how to watch it and how to put a uh, put puts in and put it when, you know, when it hurts. I forgot the term, but when it hits a certain uh, value to automatically pull you out of mm -hmm. it, like Yo, uh, stop loss. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I didn't even know about those until, you know, once I started picking up, I'm comfortable with, you know, kind of placing and playing around with it a little bit more. So I think that's another reason as well. Ignorance and bliss and, and maybe even also because man i mean you know the game is to be sold not to be told if everyone was put on to the game 
then everyone will be rich. We're not meant for everyone to be rich. The economy doesn't work for everyone to be rich. That's why it fluctuates because you have the ups and downs, right? Um, I heard a story about one of the richest persons ever lived. Damn, I can't remember. In Africa, it was an African king. Oh, uh, Mansa Musa? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But he traveled through, I want to say Egypt, uh -huh. and he gave gold yeah, yeah, yeah. to the poor people, and that completely shocked and ruined the economy because now no no one's poor everyone's rich right so that's the way like the world but more specifically like america and the government is set up it's not meant for everyone to be put on you know what i mean because they don't they don't they need to kind of it, it sucks you know it's kind of fucked up to say but they need to you know kind of feed on the low class if you would in the in a sense right yeah you know if, if everybody's rich then nobody's rich mm. that's the saying so i think you could say that's part of the reason why it's so rare to even have personal finance classes taught in high schools across exactly. the country. Exactly. Because they don't want they want they want workers. They want people to work for their corporations exactly. for them to make them rich and then they keep them in the lower levels of um the economic brackets. That's what they need in order to keep themselves at the top. And in order for you to be at the top, there needs to be somebody at the bottom. Exactly. Exactly. Couldn't have said it any better. Um, just to rewind, you said when you was a kid, you started out with the cutting grass, shoveling snow. I think every true entrepreneur, I'm, you know, I, I work a nine to five right now, but I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit mm -hmm. and I started out the same way. Like I've any, I loved when it snowed. <laughs> I'm knocking on every, I'm, I'm there from eight in the morning till 7 PM, just shoveling snow all day, but where it really started. And I want to ask if, if you did this as well, did you sell candy in school? Yep. 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 <laughs> Everyone's every, got the candy store. <laughs> every entrepreneur or true hustler has that candy story, man. Let's hear yours. Yeah, man. It was it was uh pretty much like like everyone else, bro. Just getting getting whatever I could get my hands on. It wasn't even like I had a main product because as a kid, you just get whatever you can get. Yeah, variety. Flip it in school, yeah. and the teachers would get mad. The teachers didn't like that. They try and shut that down. So you yeah. kind of try and be sneaky with it, try and finesse it. <laughs> right, right. So I started in middle school. I'm 28 years old, so I was in middle school in 07, and that's when I first started. That was before it really was like, it really, you know, got out there and whatnot. And plus, I've always been good at finessing and being, you know, under the radar and whatnot. But my grandfather stayed in Sam's Club, and he gave me, uh, would give me a variety pack of Skittles. And he would say, I'm going to give you this, sell it, keep the money. Yep. That's that's how you're going to make your money. I'm like, okay, bet. I will eat some, but then I learned, okay, <laughs> don't, don't mess with the product. Um, So yeah, I, I would do that. You know what I mean? And, and that's when it started. I was like, yo, I like this. You know what I'm saying? Fast, quick money for the snack line. Like it's nothing. But I like how you said like schools and teachers didn't like it because once it got to the point where like every hustler would do it, you're taking away money from their snack line. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. So they used to crack down on people. My man, Jeff, shout out to Hefe. He used to get cracked down sometimes. Cause he became the candy man in like high school and like they would crack down on him sometimes. And I'm like, yo, they, it's really competition. You know what I'm saying? In the yeah, market, they was, did not like it. It was a whole marketplace. Yeah. Yeah. But every true hustler has that, um, has that story. All right. So I want to ask you this. Like I said, I, I, I want to, um, you know, kind of go a little bit deeper than the surface. If they want to get, if y'all want to get the details on, you know, stock markets and what means what, so you can really, you know, I mean, just just reach out to JT. Your IG again. Let them know the it's IG again. At the Almighty JT. Yeah, and I'm gonna put it in the um, in the bio. That way you can see it and whatnot. Um, so for those who don't know, one thing that I like to ask all my guests when they come onto the show, I you can't see it right now. I'm gonna have to record it one day. But I have a vinyl wall. I have a wall of vinyls, and I ask everyone pick one vinyl. It's four, eight. It's probably like I don't know, fifteen vinyls. I always ask someone to pick one vinyl. You pick. Nipsey Hustle. Yeah. Can I ask why? Yeah, you got the um you got a lot of dope albums on there for Appreciate one. it, man. Um, I take yeah, yeah, great yeah. Great pride into it. <laughs> but um I picked the the Nipsey Hustle the Victory Lap. Mm -hmm. Cause I remember when that came out, it was 2018. It was my senior year in high school. Mm -hmm. And that was right around the time where I had just started working at Domino's. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of working, kind of studying the stock market in and out, but I think that album kind of I give credit to that album because I would listen to that while I was just driving around and this kind of inspires you to think bigger and the song my favorite song off of there is uh the young nigga young nigga, mm -hmm. with um with uh p diddy on Puff, it. yeah 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 and yeah. um he was saying uh he said first you over dedicate then you notice that you're great and you've been the whole time and it's slapping your face you stacking your safe got a crack and it was fate now you the definition laughing to the bank and then that just had me thinking like 
yo, I, I do need to over dedicate myself to this because I was just kind of I felt like I was toe dipping in. I was making a little bit of money doing a little bit of studying. But I said, if you want to really become great, you have to over dedicate yourself. And so that's what kind of got me to the point where I'm like, OK, let me stop playing around. Let me really go all in. Let me start picking up more hours at, at work so I can get some more money. Let me start spending more time on YouTube studying this stock stuff so I can get this figured out. And then that would just that was kind of the soundtrack to just while I'm riding around in the car because it'd be late because I'm delivering to a close. It'd be one, two in the morning. I'm delivering pizza, just bumping that nip. Yeah, man. And I always say, especially as a as a as a young black man, when I pick my favorite artists and favorite albums, it's ones that leave gems. Yeah, that's why I have the blueprint because literally it is somewhat of a blueprint. Exactly. Like when Jay Z speak, you listen. Uh, but Nip Victory Lab, I mean, from start to finish, that's what it's filled with. Very inspirational, like you said. And Nip really was big on, you know, uplifting the community. Like, y'all, I can do it. I'm a rolling 60 crypt that came from nothing. And I'm, you know what I mean? Like, yep. so he was big on that. And that's why it's so important. That's why that album in general is very important. You know what I'm saying? So that, I like that you picked it. I wanted you to break down why you picked it. I had a feeling as to why. And, of course, it came to that. And um, similar to yours, I like dedication with Kendrick. Yeah. Uh, same thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you really can't, nothing is going to fly by. Nothing is going to just arrive, and we're going to be great at it. Like you said, you have to over-dedicate. You have to dedicate. You have to sacrifice. You know what I mean? Like, you can't just spend all your time, you know, doing half and half, turned up half. Nah, like, you got to go crazy with it so that in the long run, you can do whatever you want with it. Yeah, yeah, and it was, it was even more important that he said, first you over-dedicate, then you notice that you're great and mm -hmm. you've been the whole time. So it's like once you really start putting that work, you'd be like, yo, I should have been doing this. Yeah. I'm good at this. Yeah. And once you realize, like, yo, like he said, you, you notice that you're great, then you start making that bread, you're growing businesses, and that's just that's just the path of, yeah. a, of, a, of a hustler. Absolutely, man. So over-dedicate yourself. It's, it, it's for the taking. Whatever it is you want, it's for the taking. Over-dedicate yourself. Thanks. R.I.P. Nip, like I said, he was huge for the black community, black community more specifically, but everyone. But, you know, more specifically, he represented the black community. Um, so speaking of which, I'm going to ask you something. Let's go and get a little deep. What are some things in the black community designed to keep us down and broke? That's a good question. That's a great question, man. I think lack of access to certain information a lot of times, because at the end of the day, in order for you to make it, get wealthy, you need information. And I think a lot of times information is kind of gatekept from people in the black community. Unfortunately, you know, you got certain communities where they they work together, they 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 share information with each other, they um they build together. And I think a lot of times in black community information is not just spread around. Even if somebody does have the information, they don't wanna they feel like now they're just separate. They don't want to give back. And you know, that's what Nipsey was big on. So again, rest in peace, Nip, but you need to be able to share that information once you get it and mm -hmm. and, and and not gatekeep that from your people. Yeah. Um, or I, from the outside looking in, the people from the outside may be like, oh, they think they all that. You know yep. what I mean? Like, oh, look at them. They think they on a pedestal now. They think they too good. You know what I mean? So it can work both ways where, like you said, maybe the people with the information kind of, maybe they are arrogant and kind of, you know, separate themselves. But then you may have people that actually want to give back, but still the people that are on the other side be like, nah, you think you're too good. Right. You know what I mean? It can work both ways. Um, what are some other things you think? Man, it's a good question, but I don't want to. I don't want to make it seem like what you was gonna say. I was gonna say, and what what do you think is the solution? Okay, for the problem that you just laid out. Yeah, the solution is we need to collaborate more. We need mm. to collaborate, man, and and I think we are kind of on that path because mm. entrepreneurship and investing now has become more uh, known. It's more known. It's it's not as foreign right. to the black community as it used to be a few years ago. Right. So I think we're on the right path, but we just gotta. We need more. We need to over dedicate ourselves, mm -hmm. not just kind of know a little bit and maybe. Mm -hmm. You put it, throw a couple bucks in your Robin Hood. Like, if you're going to do it, then over dedicate yourself, like we talked about. Yeah. And two, I don't want to make it seem like it's a lot of outside forces keeping us down because mm -hmm. that's not how my mindset works. I don't feel like, oh, well, this person is doing this, so there's nothing I can do about mm -hmm. it. I feel like there's always a solution. If you want it, if you want it, you're going to get it. So I think that. 
collaboration is one of the biggest things um, because we kind of a lot of times do things individually mm -hmm. and we don't want to help each other. We don't want to help bring each other up. We kind of start our own thing and then maybe we go off and work with other people from other communities because they're already established. Yeah. Um, but we need to build our own infrastructure. That's one of the things that we lack is just a basic infrastructure on how to create a path to success. There's no kind of set path. There's no real laid out path in the black community. Even anybody that's from the black community that does make it when they tell their story, it's always uh, unorthodox. You know, it's never like, oh, well, you know, I just followed the path that was laid out for me. Right. They kind of had to create their own path. Wow. So I think if we are able to create our own infrastructure, create our own path, I think that'll make it a lot easier for folks because a lot of people that make it out, they just end up fig having to figure things out on their own. Yeah, that's a great point. And that kind of circles back to what you said, our other communities, they, you know, they're the opposite approach. Um, like the Jewish community, the Chinese community, the Indian community, didn't it? Uh, I saw a graph that had like Indian Americans make like the most, I believe, like the highest income within a household. And I saw a comment underneath that graphic when someone said that um, they knew an Indian family, they were making great money, but still lived like six people to like a two bedroom yep. apartment until like, you know, a certain time when they each went out and I guess grabbed their own like, you know, nice house and whatnot. But, you know, that really, I'm like, damn, that really hit me like, yo, that because you know, we're, we're quick to be independent and whatnot, but like different communities, they really stick together and they teach the game within that community. And again, to what you're saying, you don't see it as much with us, but you see it all the time. Like you have, you know, Chinatowns, it's always neighborhoods that have a certain pocket of people that, you know, are amongst themselves, right? You have a, you know, an Indian pocket in a uh, neighborhood or Chinese spot or a Jewish pocket in, in neighborhoods and whatnot. And they're in that spot by themselves you know, teaching the game within them, and then they keep it going. That's why you always be like, yo, why why, uh, the, this certain type of people always got to have all the gas stations, or they always got to own all the stores or whatnot. It's because they giving it, you know what I'm saying? They giving it amongst themselves, yep. right? Um, do you listen to Earn, Earn Your Leisure? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I was yeah. just um, at InvestFest. Um, oh, oh, you yeah, went? Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit, let's talk about it. Yeah, How was yeah, it? Yeah, InvestFest was dope. InvestFest was dope. This was my second year, because my first year I went last year, and then I think they had, I think, 12,000 people. Mm -hmm. And this year they had 20,000 people, so it was Damn. bigger. Yeah, it was way bigger than last year. Wow. What were um, some of your, you know, uh, best takeaways from it? Man, I really liked um, when Diddy was talking, because uh, they had him as a keynote speaker, and it's something he was saying that, he's one of the ones that's made it now because he's a billionaire, he's right. a black billionaire. So right. people look at him like, oh, well he made it. And what he said is being a black billionaire is just an illusion of inclusion. Don't make, don't, don't think that there's still not forces trying to keep him down. Cause he was talking about the struggles that he has. Like he's Diddy, he's, he's got a track record of success for business. But even when he tries to like his Deleon deal, when he's trying to do a tequila, they kind of, they, I don't want to, like get all into it but basically they were still trying to keep him out they were still trying mm -hmm. to blackball him in a way yeah. and it's like he still has to work extra harder even at that level yeah. you still things still aren't given to you and then another thing that i think was important he said he kind of he climbed to the mountaintop right so he sees he's at the mountaintop and he can look over the other side now and he said there's no help coming mm -hmm. help is not coming for the black community he made it to the highest level and he said there is nobody that's coming to help the black community we need to be able to help ourselves and I don't, and, and to go back to the last question, I don't want to sound cliche, but I think mindset is one of our biggest problems too. Just because for me personally, the type of, the type of person I am, the way that I think, I'm never going to look at a white person or a Chinese person or Indian person that's living my dream life. They have my dream house. They got my dream car. They're taking my dream vacations. I'm not going to look at that person and say, I can't do those things because I don't look like them. Right. Because that's a defeated mindset. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us, us people have a defeated mindset already. They see, oh, well, this this white person is living my dream life. I can't do that because I'm not white. And that's a defeated mindset. You yeah. took yourself out the game yeah. before you even tried. Exactly. That's an anchor. Yeah. 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 Nah, I completely agree, man. It's definitely holding you, holding you back. And even if we did have... Because they, they may have been some forces that maybe have put us at a disadvantage or maybe we don't have as much as an advantage of someone else. But if you got to work a little harder, do that shit. Yeah. Right. Like what's the alternative? Exactly. Not, not try at all. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I like it, man. Um, let me ask you, what would you say is more important to invest time or money? Time. 
Because time is more valuable than money. How so? Time is more valuable than money because you can't make time. You can't get time back. You can't get your time back. So I think that investing money is important. Don't get me wrong, but you have to invest time. Like for me, you you a lot of times you're not going to have money until you invest some time. Because like I had to invest time learning how to make money in the stock market. I had to invest time at Domino's so I wouldn't have $0 in my bank account. So especially early on, time is definitely more important. Um, eventually you get to a point where you have a bunch of money, you can kind of invest money, have your money run errands, and then money can save you time. You can travel quicker, you can skip lines, you can, you know, whatever, whatever. But um, in the early stages, investing time is definitely more important. I agree. I agree. Because that's like you said, that's what gets you the money when you invest the time early on. You're only 23? Yeah. You're sharp, man. <laughs> you are sharp. I appreciate that. Man. Yeah, you are sharp. I thought you were, you know, at least 25 just based off your mindset and seeing your content and the way you were speaking and whatnot. You're sharp, man. 23. That's what's up. Appreciate that, man. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a young guy, but I feel like a lot of the, the things I do and say now are just kind of always there. Mm-hmm. You know, like even as a kid, um, when I would get money for um, like my birthday, you, mm-hmm. you know, grandma gives you ten dollars. Yeah. Like a lot of kids want to go buy candy or yeah. go buy toys. Like I would, I would put it in the drawer. I just oh, save man. it. I didn't even. I, it was just that's what I wanted to do. So I feel like I kind of just understood the value of money and investing just from the day I was born. Yeah, sounds like that mindset has always been there. Let's talk about dating, man. You dating? Not at the moment. Yeah, not at the moment. Um. And I, I got out of a relationship uh, not too long ago, but um, dating is 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 interesting right now. Is is interesting. And um, well, did you have a follow up question? Because I was about to I was about to even even get into something. Nah, go ahead, man. Let's go ahead. Yeah, I think dating is interesting, especially as a young man in in twenty twenty three. Um, I think it's it's simple, but it's not easy. Because there is kind of love, a burden of performance that a lot of women are expecting, I think, as a young man. And so it's, it's a lot of competition, especially girls have Instagram. They're getting DMs from all these type of dudes. So, yeah, it's, it, it, it can be complicated. But I think um, the best way to go about it, well, for one, I would say I want to clarify because I talk about dating. I talk about have a girl that's in love with you that would wait if you go to prison that cares about you, prays for you, not just run around with a bunch of different girls. Okay, so you're you're not so you're speaking of exclusive dating. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, gotcha, yeah, gotcha, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. gotcha. But, um I think, you know, if you are a young man and you and you wanna have that exclusive relationship where a woman is in love with you, I think you gotta do a couple things. For one, you need to build yourself up to someone that's worth having that. So you That's know, you, first and foremost. Yeah, first and foremost you gotta work on yourself. Yeah. Um before you even start approaching girls or chasing girls. Yeah, so, you and, know, you, and, and I didn't mean to cut you off, but see, that's where a lot of dudes have the game messed up at because they think it's the exterior. Uh-huh. They don't they don't focus on the interior. They think it's the clothes, the shoes, the car, you know what I mean, that they're paying the $700 car note on to get that <laughs> hell cut. You can't buy love, man. Yeah, bro, so they think it's, it's the exterior that gets them, and it may get them, it may get their attention because they're attracted to the exterior. You ain't turning her on, them leather seats in that car turn her uh-huh. on. You know what I'm saying? Them, them red bottoms that you got is turn her on, not you, not because of the stuff you spitting, you know what I mean? So like you said, if you focused on the interior, focus on the foundation, develop yourself as a man, then she's going to see you again. You want it to be to the point where she's like, OK, I need to be with that dude. Like, I need to be in his vicinity. Like, I need to, you know, I need to be in his social realm, his status yep, realm, because yep, yep. that'll make me look and feel better. Right. Yep. So, yeah, that's that's absolutely where it starts, first and foremost. Like, not it don't it don't got nothing to do with how much money you got. Now, of course, in the long run. That does play a factor because yeah. one of the number one leading cause in divorce and marriages is finances. So, of course, that plays a factor. But if we're talking dating, getting there, it starts from within. Developing yourself as the man that you want to look in the mirror and, you know what I'm saying, be like, yo, I'm 110% proud of the person I'm looking at. And, man, I, I'll tell you a story quickly because um, this is a couple of years ago. I went to the club with a buddy of mine. And we met two girls. I was talking to one. He was talking to the other one. Mm-hmm. And um, and then he left. He went to the bathroom or something. And then I asked both of the girls. I don't remember exactly what the question. It was something about the club. It was like, what time does the bar close? Mm-hmm. Something about the club. Yeah. And the girl he had been talking to, she says, why don't you just ask your friend, doesn't he own the club? I said, <laughs> I said excuse me? She's like, yeah, he told me he was the owner. So come to find out. 
Come to find out, he had told her, not even just that girl, but multiple girls in the club. He was saying that he's the owner of the club, yeah. that he drives a Ferrari, but it's in the shop right now, so he's got a rental, that he lives in a penthouse, but it was flooding. It's got some flood damage, so he's staying in the Airbnb. So he's trying to make it seem like he's the wealthiest, most successful dude in the room. And again, I don't think he was trying to date these girls. He was just used to try and maybe just take them home one yeah. night. And so I never asked. It might work if that's what he's trying to do. Right. If, if that's your plan, I, I've never done it, so yeah, I don't know. Nah, but nah, <laughs> but nah, a lot of <laughs> I think it's a lot of dudes that are just lying. So not only work on yourself, but be authentic. Because he's he wasn't a bum. He drove a nice car. It wasn't a Ferrari. He had a nice place. It wasn't a penthouse. Yeah. But I think if you would have just been authentic, you still could have got the same results mm -hmm. that you were looking for. And a lot of girls tell me because with me, what you see is what you get. I'm right. not gonna lie. I don't I'm not perfect. I don't try to make things up like I am who I am and I and I put that out there and either you're gonna rock with it or you're not. And a lot of women tell me that's refreshing because they say a lot of guys are just lying to them, feeding the BS. Maybe not as extreme as, oh, I'm a club mm -hmm. owner of Ferrari, yeah, but yeah. to some degree they're feeding the BS. So I think if you're authentic with who you are when you approach these women, they're going to respect you a lot more. And and two, it's going to, because you can only pretend to be somebody that you're not for so long. So long. Bro. Like, it's only that so long to, you can say my Ferrari's in the shop. <laughs> that has to be draining, bro. Like yeah. trying to keep up with that. And then, like, you're in the back of your head, you're. You're somewhat worried still in the back of your head about getting caught. Yep. Like getting caught in your lie. Like that has to be the most draining shit ever, man. Let's talk about first dates, non exclusive dating. Let's talk about first dates. Okay. Um, you said, you know, what you see is what you get. Just I have like first date rules, if you would. One of them is at the time only had one car, but um a couple years ago, RIP Mamba, one of my dream cars was my 2015 Honda Accord Coupe. With a, it was a six speed, blacked out, black on black. That's why I called her Mamba. And I had that. And then I had like my O2 everyday Honda yep. Accord. So my, my, you know what I'm saying? First date, one of my first date rules is you're going to see the car I'm driving. And right now I got a CRV. Okay. You know what I'm saying? 06 CRV. First date, you're going to see the car I'm driving in. Yep. I'm bald headed. I like to wear hats <laughs> though, but I've, I've always liked to wear hats, but I have a bald head. Right. You're going to see my, I'm, I got to be bald headed on my first date. You know what I mean? And then three, she has to know I'm frugal. It is what it is. I'll pay for the first date and I want to get your take on that. But I am frugal, right? Shit, for real, for more than night, more than not first date, we walking around a park or something. We yeah. walking around a lake. You know what I mean? Like we doing something free before I really invest. I got to <laughs> see where your head at before I just go straight yeah, to, you yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying, yeah. investing and whatnot. So just, you know what I'm saying, the authenticity it's what lasts. And first date, that's my first date rule is those three. Like, you're going to see my car, you're going to see my bald head, and you're going to know that I'm frugal. Other than that, let's kick it and have a good time. But my question for you is for first dates, um, I'm, I'm sure you've seen plenty of content where, like, you know, uh, women are asked first dates. Like, how much should a guy spend on a first date, right? And they'll say, uh, it'll go from anywhere from, like, 100 to $1,000. Yeah, dollars. crazy. crazy. And they're answers. dead ass serious yeah, when they say it, too, right? So what's your take on that, on their opinions and whatnot? And then, like, your, you know, like, how much you would personally spend on a first date? I mean, I do understand that there are some guys out there that might spend thousands of dollars on the first date, and that's crazy, cool. crazy. I'm not one of those guys, right, right. you know, because I'm frugal, too. Mm -hmm. And I do like to spend money. But like you said, it's an investment when you're dating these women. And like I invest in stocks, but when it comes to the stock market, I don't invest in things that I don't know, mm. things that I don't understand. Mm -hmm. So if you want me to really invest in you, and not saying I'm not going to pay for the first date, because I pay for the first date, not nothing crazy. We can go out to eat, nice little spot, maybe something like coffee day, somewhere we just getting so, to know each other. So like what's the a limit, first date limit for you? Um, that's a good question, because I don't really like... I don't even think about it in terms of like I'm not spending more than this amount because it's Shit, like I do. <laughs> I don't spend more than no. because because it's it's not even about the dollar amount. I guess it's just about the location because I know oh, I'm not right. gonna take her to a a fancy five star right, right, restaurant right, right, right. on the first day. So yeah. you know we'll just do something casual, like you yeah. said. We'll go meet up and, and have a walk, or we'll go to go on a like a coffee date or something mm -hmm. like that. Just something, something basic, something. So yeah. we'll maybe like walk around a museum or something. Yeah. So like I'm saying, like official date. Y'all did y'all walk? You know what I'm saying? I got to know each other. Now you want to really kind of step out and y'all really want to have a good time. Now, what would be like your limit? Mm. See, because I've had women where I've been dating them for like after a couple of months, and then like mm -hmm. we take a trip, like we go on vacation. But okay. for me, it's like. For me, is is I guess it's a little different for me because I like to do fly. I like to do fly things, fly mm -hmm. stuff. Like, 
And I'll do that by myself. Like I've taken solo trips on beach fronts in, 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 in Mexico or just, you know, go to go to L.A. or, or, or whatever and get nice rental cars and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So those are things that I like to do by myself. Go nice places, drive nice cars, eat nice foods. And so if I have a lady that I'm dealing with, a lot of times I'll include her in that. But it's not like necessarily... I'm doing this to try to impress you to try and get, because I'm going to do this either way. Right. Without you, because that's just stuff that I like to do. Right. And if I have a woman that I like and I feel like deserves that stuff, then yeah, I'll bring her along. But that's that's key. You have to deserve that because that's not right. something I just do for any girl that I just meet. But, you know, for like I said, if, if a woman is in love with me and loyal to me and, you know, has my best interests and I know is generally wants what's best for me, then yeah, you know, you get to you get to perks of that. But yeah. this, that's something that has to be earned. Got you. She's worth being involved in your circle and your exactly. energy at that point. When I, I exactly. see what you're saying. That makes perfect sense. I'm the same way. Like I said, it just comes down to it. Yeah, and, and don't, even though for, for the ladies listening, even though me and JT saying we're frugal and whatnot, we'll definitely pay for the first date. Like, we're not, yeah, yeah, we're yeah, not monsters. Gonna, <laughs> I'm we're, not a monster. Yeah, we're not barbarians. Like, yeah. I'll pay for the second. So here's how, here's how I go about it. Okay, yeah, give me this, give me a sister. I 100% pay for the first date. Okay. I even have a limit for a first date. It's $100. My, yeah, I like that. I like that. I'll do that, pay for the first date, cool. If I like her, and I could see it going somewhere, I pay for the second date. Mm -hmm. Again, on the first date, it's known that I'm frugal. Right. So after the second date, okay, we're talking about, you know, it don't even have to be 50-50, but let's say we go somewhere, we, we go to two spots. I'll get something at this spot. I'll get the food, you get the drinks, right? It's it's not going to, after the second date, it's like, all right, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's, you know, let's let's work something Make out. Something, yeah. I don't want to, and even if it is a third date, I pay for the whole third date. Not every date moving forward is just going to be me paying for every single thing. Because I've seen a lot of dudes go broke over that. Yeah, man. And it's not worth it. Yeah. It's like, for what? Exactly. Exactly. And it's, food is expensive, man. <laughs> Everything's you know expensive, every, bro. Everything is Everything is expensive. Everything expensive. Exactly. So I'll, you know, after that point, like, let's, you know, if we go to a few spots, I'll take care of this bill. You know what I'm saying? If the next one, you want to take care of that, cool. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Like, Let's just let, let it takes two to tango at that point. You know what I'm saying? The first two, maybe three dates, I'll look out after that. It takes two to tango. Right. And if she's not cool with that, if she expects for me to pay for every single date, then you are not the woman for me. I don't care how bad you are. I don't care about, you know what I'm saying, nothing. I don't know. If you expect me taking care of every date, at least right now, because I got I mean shit, I ain't I ain't, you know what I mean? Yeah. I ain't no millionaire right now. Shit, man. So I ain't, I ain't there yet. So if you expect for me to cover everything, every date right now, as of September 2023, me <laughs> being here, then you are not the woman for me. Don't even try, shorty. So I just wanted to throw that out there first and foremost. Hey, so 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 when they check back in, in, in a year, a couple of years, or whatever, down the line, and you a millionaire, is the answer going to be different? Yeah, it's going to be different. Yeah. Okay. The conversation going to be a little different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. For sure. I, but and, you ain't going to get there if you're blowing all your money on these girls now. So, exactly. Yeah, exactly. 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 And honestly, I'm not even really crazy dating right now anyway, bro, because yeah. I'm just so focused on like this and work I'm and like work, time yeah. and then like just developing myself working out or whatnot like i really don't have time or energy for anything serious that's the thing man it'd be the time yeah it's the time investing that that's what we said earlier time is the most important thing to invest yeah. even more so than money because it's just it's going so fast bro 24 hours is not that long especially when you consider the amount of time that we sleep and eat you know what i'm saying and take away from actual productivity time the day goes by so fast like, there's no way I have time to really put that towards a woman right now. Because one thing for sure that women are going to want is attention. Yep. <laughs> and then I tell you, I, um, I, even for that reason, like, my last relationship, like, it was... Um, it was like longer distance, mm. and I liked it because mm -hmm. it was like I don't, I liked it because I don't have to worry yeah. about you trying to come over every day, exactly. trying to hang out, trying to see each other every day. Mm -hmm. We might see each other a couple times a month, a few times a month, and like for me, that was perfect. Yeah, because if it was if if you're always trying to be around me, it's like I don't have time for that, and then you're gonna mm -hmm. be upset with me. Yep. but I just can't give you that with where I'm at right now. Exactly, because one and and like I said, that was one thing for cert for sure. Two things for certain is. You could be, and this happened to me so many times. It's actually I went celibate at one point. You could be, and you you could be grinding. You could be in productivity time, you know, for however many time of the day. You could really be on some productivity stuff, being constructive. And if she come in your personal space, and she, you know, what I'm saying, start 
playing with your ear, touching on you, rubbing your neck and your chest and whatnot, you're going to cave. Yeah, because because you trying to you trying to wake up at six in the morning, go to the gym. Next thing you know, she start rubbing up, stay in bed, touching on. Then you like. Oh well, you know I can stay in bed. Yeah. I don't need. I skip the gym today, and then yeah. it becomes a pattern. And you're done for. Yeah, you're done for every single time. Um, earlier I mentioned. Let me get your take on uh, leasing versus buying a car. I think I don't have a problem with with leasing or buying. I've done both. I've mm -hmm. leased cars. I've, well, not leased. Um, I, no, no, not leased. My fault. I, I'm just, I was thinking of paying a car note. Not nah, leasing. Um. I right, think, isn't that with the car note leasing a car? That's um, at least it's just when you when you pay and uh, don't have it, right? I'm not sure because I've I've only bought like my car straight out. Is so you're yeah. talking about having a car note? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I think I've done both. Mm -hmm. I bought a car straight out, and I've um I've had car notes. I don't I don't think there's anything wrong with anyone. I think a lot of times people want to pay off the car right away because they feel like. For some reason, there's like a there's like a stigma. It's like you're broke if you're paying a car note, mm -hmm. and I don't agree with that. I think a lot of times it makes sense to because one, you're gonna need a car, mm -hmm. right? And if you don't have money to buy the car out front, out front, then it makes sense, right? And two, especially if you're trying to do things like you're trying to invest. Say you are trying to invest in the stock market, but you don't have a car. Well, it doesn't make sense to take all your money and put that into a car. Now you're zero dollars mm -hmm. because you can. Put a little bit of money, you know, get a little down payment, then have a car, have your monthly payment. But your that extra cash that you save from not investing all of that into buying the car, now you can use that to make flips in the stock market. So you're making a bigger return on your money. And then uh, take some parts of that out to pay the car note. Exactly, exactly. So I think either one makes sense. But one thing I will say is if you are thinking about should I should I buy this car? Like if you have to think about it. Then you have no business trying to trying to buy the car, right? Like mm -hmm. if it's a tough decision for you, mm -hmm. then your best option is to just get a car payment. But if it's like it makes sense, you don't really have to think about it. Oh, I make that much money in a month or whatever in two right. weeks, then yeah, then it makes sense. Yeah, whatever makes sense. And something that doesn't make sense is getting a car, getting like a, you know, a, a BMW or a Hellcat just because it looks nice, but all of your money is going towards that car payment yeah right? that, no that doesn't make this it's, it's some <laughs> folks paying ridiculous amounts Yo, of money on car payments like, i think the average price is like 650 yeah 600 yes i know it's close to 700 something yeah, like that which is yeah, crazy yeah yeah Woo, that's half a rent in some places i was already saying that's rent some place that ain't rent nowhere not no more at least man no 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 not at all and Charlotte is getting up there too. Charlotte is definitely getting up With there, rent. man. From from because I've only been here for two years, but yeah. I've already seen the increase just in the last couple of years I've been here. Are you um? Do you own a? Do you own property or are you renting right now? I'm renting for now. Okay. Do you uh see yourself? Are you involved with real estate? Do you see yourself getting involved in real estate? I'm definitely going to be involved in real estate at some point. Um, right now I've been kind of focused on building out my uh, software company, which is digital real estate. Okay. So I, I make money off that. So I'm, I, the money that maybe I could have put into the house, I'm putting into my software and I'll grow that. But then eventually I am going to get into real estate, become a homeowner mm -hmm. um, and an investor. When would you, do you have like a set target date range on when you want to get involved with real estate? No, I don't like to put time frames on it. Um, my saying is take your time without wasting time. Mm -hmm. So work towards it. But if you put a time limit, time frame on it and then maybe fall behind, then you're going to rush and it's going to be sloppy. You get into bad deals. So yeah. I don't like to do time limits. I just work towards it, um, but I don't waste time. Yeah. Plus, I mean, shoot, interest rates are ugly right now. Exactly. They are disgusting. Exactly. It, it needs to make sense. And right now, I don't think it makes sense. At all. No, <laughs> not at all. Like, even when I, when I leave this spot, I want to, like, you know, uh, be a homeowner. But it's like... Damn, bro. Like, I mean, what are we like seven something right now? Yeah, like, it's, the timing is terrible. Yeah, right now. bro. So it's like, all right. I mean, I want to do it, but I'm not going to rush it and put myself in a hole. You know what I mean or whatnot. But I'm one way. I think like I'm always thinking ahead. Yeah, which is a good and I don't want to say a bad thing, but it's a good and a okay thing. Or or it can it can be kind of detrimental just because I don't enjoy the moment. Right. Right. So I don't like I'm never like if something big happens, I'm like, cool, bet that's what's up. But I'm I'm just never really like, crazy excited about it. I'm always thinking about the next thing or the next step. Um, 
and I I think that's good because like I say that to say like even the spot I'm in now like even though I live here physically mentally I do not live here bro right yeah I'm already it. thinking about my next crib yeah I guess like and I'm only four months in on my lease here like um but I, I get that from my grandfather like he always said never get excited and that's just always stuck with me I've just been cool calm and collective with every situation good or bad and I think that helps keep me even killed um but then you know again that just keeps me motivated to moving forward, you know what I'm saying? Even like with the podcast, like right now it's cool, but like I, where I'm at now with the podcast, I saw this when I first started. Right. And physically I'm right here, but mentally I'm I'm in a completely different studio, you know what I'm saying, like right now. I love this, like I love my setup and whatnot, but I'm not here right now. Like I'm in a whole nother studio, you know what I'm saying, with a whole, I'm already picturing my backdrop and all that than where I am right now. No, I, I I completely agree because I'm I have the same mindset of always thinking uh, thinking about what's next. And I was just having a conversation with someone about this over the weekend, so I want to ask you because they were saying they recognize that, then they know that about me. That I'm always thinking about what's next, and because of that, it's hard for me to be present, be in the moment, like enjoy the moment. So I know you like we here, we now we're talking, and it's cool, but you still thinking about what's next. So do you have those moments where you're like enjoying the moment and you're present, or like even just for a little bit, or do you always feel like? It's just impossible for you to live in a moment because you're thinking about the next move. You know, it's crazy. It depends what it is. When it comes to my personal development, I'm never, I'm never like celebrating that moment ever. But when it's like outside of personal development, I'll settle. Like football with the right, Eagles. Right, right, right. People know I go crazy about the Eagles. Like I go to games all the time. Like I love stuff like that. Like Super Bowl. Yeah, I'm celebrating. I do stuff like that. But when it comes to my actual personal development and goals of mine, I never celebrate in the moment. Like it's like, okay, I did it. That's what's up. I'm thinking of the next one ahead. Yeah, like, I completely agree, yeah. man. I think the most I'll do, like today I posted on my Instagram because I hit 180, um, which is one of my goals. I was working out today and I sit on scale. So I'm like, okay, I hit 180. But then I, I look around, I'm like, okay, cool, you know, it was good. Yeah. Like, let's get 185 now. Exactly, <laughs> so, exactly, exactly. Which is good because you want to keep working towards that momentum. That's what keeps the momentum going. I think one thing that messes up people's momentum is they celebrate in the moment of personal development or personal uh, goals that they accomplish. And when they hit it, they celebrate and they become stagnant. Yep. But then it's like, once you become stagnant, you don't keep going, you don't keep rising no more. So what's the alternative? You decline, Exactly. you go back down, which gives you another reason to get back to that spot again. And it's kind of like a, you know, a seesaw. But when you get to a point where you're like, okay, this was my goal. That's what I wanted to do. I got to it. All right, cool. That's what's up. Keep going. That's what keeps the momentum going. You see it with football. When Tom Brady wins a Super Bowl, he's the next day getting ready. Yeah, 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 training. Yeah. Getting, ready, getting training, getting ready for the next one. When Nick Saban wins a Super when Nick Saban wins a national championship, they'll celebrate for a day. Nick Saban, Bill Belichick, they'll celebrate for a day. Two days later, they're looking at recruits in high school, you know, to bring in for the next recruiting class. They're studying film. That's, I think that's a recipe for winners and achievers. Yep. Like, you can't celebrate the moment. Like, it feels good. We're not saying it doesn't feel good. It feels great. But that's not like. It's not like an I made it moment. Yeah. Because it's always more. It's always more. Like, if that was the case, then Bill Russell would have stopped at five rings. Right? <laughs> it's funny you said that because you you see videos of him at the championship parade. He looks pissed. Exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. Like, <laughs> like, he was like, I don't want to be here. I want to be at work. I want to be working. I don't want to be partying. Exactly. Getting better for the next round. So that's just, that's a, you know, it's, it's a great thing to have. You know, and some people may kind of, you know, downplay it like, Oh, you should celebrate more. You should, you know, celebrate your achievements or whatnot. It's cool. We'll acknowledge them. Yeah. But we're not going to stop our momentum, right? We want to keep going to the next one. That's a very important trait, I think, to have for uh, success. Yeah, I think for guys like us, there is no turning it off. Because when you're really about it, when you really are about progress and moving forward, it's not something that you can turn on and off. Yeah. It's going to be on all the time. It has to be. It's going to be. It has yeah. to be. Um, so you're, you're working out. You said you hit 180. Yeah. That's what's up. Uh, what type of workouts do you do? Do you do free weights, calisthenics? Free weights. Um, I <laughs> I used to not do cardio at all because I, I just hated it. But I've been doing a lot more cardio lately. Um, but I do a lot of free weights. I want to get into boxing, though. Okay. Yeah, that's a great yeah. workout. Great workout. Like, it's not even just about the throwing hands aspect. Like, boxing is great conditioning. Like, even, like... You know, spending five minutes throwing jabs on a on a punching bag, bro, that thing will wear your shoulders out. Yep. Like that is great strength and conditioning right there for you. Um, what type of cardio do you do? I do um treadmill or I do bike. Okay. 
So me personally, cardio, it is an exercise for me, but that's my therapy. Yeah. Like, bro, like I go, like I jog now and it, and it keeps getting better. So now I jog six miles. Like I'm actually going tomorrow morning. Like, but it's, I do it for the cardio. Yeah, cool. It's a great workout. But bro, like I'm in such a trance when I jog. Like it's insane. Like I have my specific playlist and I go and it's just like, that is like a restart and refresh button for like my psyche. Like if I had like a, you know, like a kind of a bad day or a bad week or my energy's just isn't crazy, certain music like Nip, Nip and Jay-Z, yep. they're heavy on my playlist when I jog. And then when I listen to it, it's just like puts a battery in my back and it just flushes out anything negative. Like that is very therapeutic for me. And of course, you know, you get the cardio aspect yeah, too, yeah, yeah. but yeah, cardio is, is, is superb. I'm kind of just now getting to that point because I, for like the past month and a half, every time I go work out, I do a mile. And at first it was it was miserable. Like I just I didn't mm -hmm. want to do it, but I right. made myself do it. And now I'm kind of at the point where, like you said, it it is it, no longer miserable for me. It's like it's it's, it's mental clarity. It helps yeah. me. Yeah, that's a that's a, a, a definitely a hack for cardio. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. You said cardio, go out in nature. Yeah. Outside. I I mean you said treadmill, man. Um yeah, outside. You do like like trails. Around. Trails, streets. I can't I would be miserable if I jogged on the treadmill, to be honest with you. I have to be outside when I jog. A little bit of sun. I don't want the sun to be completely gone because the sun is actually good for you. Right. Contrary to popular belief, the sun is good for you, especially for us melanated folks. Like, is that contrary to popular belief? Yeah. I mean, for some people, they say, like, you know, the sun will, like, you know, drain you out or it's bad for your skin uh, or, yeah, or, yeah. or bad for your eyes or whatnot. Some people say it, but okay. the sun is great for you. I don't think everyone is hip to like vitamin D. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Know that. I was going to say, I've been on the sun. It's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sun, I've, I've heard, I've heard okay. different from, yeah. from some people, I but you. I need a little bit of sun when I'm out. I like it, you know, nice and hot and yeah, bro. Outside trails. I do like trails, whether it's trails or street. I just need to be outside when I jog and I like, I like jogging like with a nice view. Yeah. Like give me like a city view or give me some streets when I jog. I get motivated when I'm around other people when I jog, but I just wanted to make that recommendation. Try jogging outside. Uh, yeah, gotcha. Use the Under Armour Map My Run app. It like tracks down, you know, how long you've been jogging and whatnot and miles and everything. But yeah, outside. And then it sounds like you're, you're getting there. If you said it was miserable, but now you're like, okay, I see some. Yeah, because before it was like I could lift weights for eight hours straight mm -hmm. and not care. I'd be right. cool. But then it's like, and then at the end of that, if I got to do 30 minutes of cardio, I'm mm -hmm. like, damn. Right, right. <laughs> but right. now I'm getting to the point where cardio is just naturally becoming a part of my workout. So it doesn't feel like I'm, I'm, I'm torturing myself anymore. Yeah. And the playlist is key too. Playlist is a very key element to working out. Yeah, exactly. Um, And then it's kind of opposite for me. Like I love cardio. I love jogging, even though I try not to do it as much as I'm trying to gain weight. But when it comes to like lifting weights, like, now I'm like, I kind of go through the motions. Yeah, it's still somewhat therapeutic for me as well when you're working out because it's good to you know release that tension when you're lifting and whatnot. But even still, sometimes especially leg day, it's like all right, I'm kind of yeah, <laughs> kind of just doing it to do it. But when it's cardio, like I'm excited to do it, which is weird because like in high school and college, lifting was my thing. Did like, you play football? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lifting was my thing, and then cardio was like, man, eh, I ain't trying to do that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, let's 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 end it with football, shall we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I, I was gonna say I played in high school too. Yeah, what yeah. position? I played um linebacker and safety. Okay, so yeah. you were you were striking out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I was um I wasn't the biggest guy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm still not the biggest guy, but I I got people on the ground. That was my I could get people. I get anybody on the ground. It doesn't matter you big or whatever. I'm, that's all that I'm gonna put you on the ground. And that's then, all, yeah, so that's they put all me that right matters. there in the middle. Okay, so you was middle, but middle or outside linebacker. Both. I played. I played everywhere on defense, really. And safety. Yeah. Did you play offense at all? No, nah, I didn't do offense. Okay. What's your favorite part of defense? I just like tackling people. I like just just hitting. I just like hitting people. Put them on the ground. Put them on the back. It just felt good for me. Would you rather have an interception or a big hit that had the whole crowd go ooh? For me personally, like for me, yeah, I want that big hit. Yeah. But if you want to talk about the highlight reel, like yeah, yeah the yeah. interception and stuff. But for me, I, I need that big hit. Same. Same. I was, uh, man, I was, I played college ball at 185, but I was a missile. Yeah. I was laying shit out. And I'm not just saying it to say, look, the honest guy don't lie. 
It's on YouTube if y'all yeah, want to like, Go pull up that. Go yeah, pull yeah, up the, yeah, the, yeah, the highlights. Yeah. Pull it up on YouTube. Yeah. That's nothing. But yeah, me too. If I had to pick between an interception or a big hit, I'm taking a big hit. <laughs> Especially if like you injured someone. Like <laughs> it, just feels, it felt good, bro. No. It felt good. To have like to put a hit on somebody and they're injured or put a hit on somebody and they cough the ball up. Or to put a hit on somebody and you hear the crowd go, ooh. Yeah, bro. yeah. They're getting up real ooh. slow. They, yep. That is such a great feeling. And I'm not naturally a violent person, but on that field, it's different. Yeah, it's different. It's different. That's how Brian Dawkins was. Yeah, because you can be nice. You can be whatever. On Off the field, you know, the nicest guy in the world. But yeah. you get on that field, it's time to hurt people. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, man. Brian Dawkins, outside. that's why his alter ego was Weapon X. Yep. Because, like, outside of the field, and he's very religious, you know, respectful dude, polite dude. Like, he, you know what I'm saying, calm and whatever. But when he stepped on that turf, and put that put that number twenty with the dark visor yep, on and yep. turn in a weapon. The next. blackout. It was starting to hurt people. <sighs> oh my goodness, man! You know what? You know a safety who I think would have been top three, maybe even top two greatest of all time. Sean Taylor. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. He 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 had a lot of potential, man. It was a shame. That's one of the saddest. You know what I'm saying? Like, saddest moments of someone leaving too early. Because even in those three or four seasons that he played, he did more than vast majority of safeties have done in a 10-year span. Vast majority. I mean, the amount of plays that he made within those three or four, three years, three seasons, I believe. Within those three seasons, the amount of plays he made, 99% of defensive backs don't see in their whole career because he was that guy that was always around the action he was always at the ball always making the tackle always where the play was at and you don't see that a lot nah whether it was a big hit or an interception or pick six or forced fumble i mean like bro i think he easily would have been you know uh two okay so you played linebacker and safety let me get your greatest linebacker of all time and greatest safety of all time of all time is tough because when I, I I like to think of the guys that I actually watch because I can go back and watch some some highlights and if you watch a highlight tape anybody can look great if you only take their best moments. Good point. Yeah, so I, I think I'll keep it to folks that I've seen that Res I've watched. Yeah, respectable. that because I can see the good moments, yeah. see the bad moments, yeah. see everything. Respectable. So for safeties, growing up, I really loved watching Troy Palomalu. I really loved watching Ed Reed. Pick one. Cause that was always the battle between yeah, the two, it's, right? It's tough. You gotta pick one, it's JT. Tough. It's you tough. gotta pick one. It's tough, man. <laughs> pick one. If I had to pick one, I think I'm gonna go with Ed. Yeah. I think I'm gonna go with Ed if I if I if I had to pick one. Yeah. And linebackers, um, I tell because when I was in high school when I was watching, um, I used to watch his film a lot. Um, I like watching Bobby Wagner on the Seahawks, because he was so What's the word? Like just just the technical like he played football the way it was meant to be played yeah. as a linebacker. Coming downhill, shooting the gaps, mm -hmm. getting like it was it was just so perfect. It was like yeah. that's exactly what coaches want to see. He's definitely a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Yeah, well rounded. He's very well rounded. So that's so you got Bobby Wagner and Ed Reed. Yeah. All right. That's a that's a great selection. My answer, safety Ed Reed. I yeah. think I think easily Ed Reed is if you're talking safety, the job of the safety, last line of defense and being all over the field. Ed Reed is the greatest of all time. A lot of people say Ronnie Lott. Again, we didn't grow up watching Ronnie Lott, but right. based off film, Ronnie Lott was a beast. But me personally, I would put, um, I, damn, how did I just go blank with his name? I would put, oh, this is kicking my ass. How did I just forget his name? Like I, I would put the Steelers, number 26. What the hell? Played corner and safety. Rod Woodson. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would put Rod Woodson. Yeah, I, would, yeah. I would go Rod Woodson, Ronnie Lott, Ed Reed, if that's the case. But Ed Reed and then linebacker, I would. I mean, you know, I my whole family is Ravens fans. Yeah, yeah. I know you can say uh, Ray. Ray Lewis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Ray. I like Ray too. He's really my favorite linebacker. But when I talk about best, I think about playing the game yeah. the way it's meant to be played. Like yeah. when coaches will tell you, this is what you got to right. do. Right. Right. And so Ray, he was just kind of, he was just different. Like he was doing his own thing and he was doing it better than anybody could. And then he had the passion too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the fact that Ed and Reed went out, went in the Super Bowl together, I mean, I think that's easily the best, especially the best to play on the same team together. So yeah. that makes sense. Um, well, listen, JT, great convo. Drop some gems. Um, again, I'm going to put the link to... 
I want you to shout out both of your companies again, but I'm going to put the link to them in the description. But shout those out and shout out how people can reach out to you if they have any questions, if they want to get involved with investing, whether it's trading or the stock market. Like, you know, what are some ways they can reach out to you and find your companies? Yeah. Again, the best way to get in touch with me and my businesses, um, go to my Instagram at the almighty JT. Uh, I've got the link. It's got access to my companies. And then I've got some other things on there, like some tutorials. Um, some free information on my YouTube of how you can get started as a beginner. Um, and then I just post free content every day. You can learn a lot. Um, I'm all about giving back value. Even if you're not a paid customer, you can definitely learn a lot just from my content. Um, so get on my Instagram at the almighty JT. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's what we're going to do it. And it's going to be everywhere in the link in the description. Um, and whichever way you're tuning in, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on your respective podcast platform, from the bottom of my heart, I truly appreciate y'all for tuning in. I just ask that you hit like, subscribe, share this out. That way that you can be kept up to date on every new episode moving forward. Again, I got a shout out to my bro JT for pulling up on the show. Yeah, man. Appreciate you. Hey, man, this dude is sharp right here. At 23 years old, you a sharp dude, man, and your future is very bright. And keep it going, man. Uh, but for all y'all tuning in, until next time, make sure that y'all personally stay safe, stay sane out here because it is crazy. But most importantly, stay blessed. Peace.